Hey everyone, this is Mr. Adoyo again, helping you fight your today for your better tomorrow. And today we're gonna be continue to talk about um, why it's advantageous to be a self-taught developer. And we're gonna tackle this from um, exploring this topic from the learning perspective. So number one, you're in control of what success looks like from a curriculum standpoint, right? So when you go to college or even when you join a coding bootcamp, I mean, coding boot camps are a better example, but then let's take college for example. Like everyone who went to college knows that you're taking courses sometimes that are just irrelevant to your major. Well, when you're a self-taught developer, you don't have to deal with any of that shenanigans. That's because you can control exactly what you want to learn and what you need to learn, right? So you don't have to take a general ed course on like, I don't know, something that's super irrelevant, like maybe like learning about fossils or something. Not not that <laughs> that learning about fossils is not cool and not interesting, but if you want to become a developer, like having to learn about fossils um, during that entire experience just does not help you. And typically, you don't have to like, you know, build the wheel from scratch, right? You can go to your favorite college um, computer science program, look at the curriculum, or go to like a coding bootcamp that you wanna join, look at the curriculum and be like, oh, they're learning these technologies, oh, they're learning these type of methodologies or these types of um, concepts, and you just integrate that into your own self-taught curriculum. And next, reason number two. Um, from a learning standpoint, being a self-taught developer is actually more fun, and that's because I mean, it piggybacks off of the first reason, right? You don't have to deal, you control what success looks like and you don't have to deal with taking um, irrelevant courses, right? So it makes it more fun because you know exactly what you wanna learn, no, what you need to learn and what, also what you wanna learn. And then you can freely just pick courses or like read up on blogs or free resources to help you learn. Like the downfall of like, college or like a coding boot camp is they put stress on learning right and sometimes it works like sometimes stress is the best motivator for learning it, it kind of ingrains or like imprints that specific instance of whatever you're trying to learn knowledge like super embedded in your brain because of that stress because of that fear or something but not all people learn really well that way right and then for people, for lifelong learners, there are, uh, the, the best advantage of that is um, positive learning, right? Where you actually enjoy what you're learning and then it becomes integrated into your life. And programming is hard. Like sometimes the college professor or even like the instructor at that coding bootcamp, their explanations might not be the best fit for you. And it's frustrating when you only have that to work with, right? I mean, you can leverage free resources in the infinite sea that's the internet, but yeah, like if you're a self-taught developer, you already have access to that um, digital ocean, right? Of, of knowledge that you can leverage. So that, so being able to have that freedom to learn on your own terms really makes it more fun and engaging and less stressful for sure. Next, the third reason, you can leverage like great um, resources from self-published um, um, teachers online, right? So those people who teach like Udemy or have their own courses on their own websites. I know when I was learning, like I was looking up um, Tyler McGinnis, um, Brad Traversy, and like other um, people online who are really great teachers who taught what I needed to learn. And then that is really hard to find at a college level where you're kind of stuck with the professors that you've been assigned and even at a coding boot camp where the instructor that you're assigned might not be the greatest fit for you in terms of um, communicating the information or the skills that you need to learn into your brain. Another advantage is um, when you're from a learning perspective, being a self-taught developer, you are very agile. So you could be learning or you could be going in one direction and then once you realize that 
maybe based on market feedback from your mentors or like other software developers or just the news in general like oh this type of technology or this company wants x type of um employee then you can adapt to that versus um having to wait for college or coding boot camp to be like oh okay we're gonna change your curriculum and then we're gonna add that on because you already have like a set curriculum that it's like basically a predefined roadmap of what success looks like to them and you have to abide to that if you're in college or a coding boot camp but when you're self-taught let's say you found that maybe like you initially wanted to become a back-end engineer and you were just learning the back end and then you were like crap this is not a good fit for me i want to switch to the front end well you can do that you can freely switch switch it up if you're self-taught but if you're in a college environment or even a coding boot camp and you've already committed the time and the money maybe not time but the money into like learning that type of skill set then it's really hard to back out from that and this brings me to the next point which is you from a self-taught developer perspective you're learning i mean first because it's fun right we talked about that point but second you're learning because your life kind of depends on it right um usually like when you're teaching yourself anything i mean you want to have some sort of end point right um i mean if you're at a stage in life where you can just learn for fun that's great but then most people who are in their 20s mid 20s 30s they're trying to learn to advance their like career or something right um so from a self-taught developer perspective like you're learning and you're learning like your life depends on it right you're like man i need to get these skills down so that i can apply it and get like a pretty decent paying job as a software engineer in the future in college I mean, this is where like college and boot camp would be pretty similar. Let's say you go to like a state, a university, a UC type of college where you're paying um, pretty much a similar or comparable prices to like a pretty top tier coding boot camp. And you only have like three or four months to do that. There you're really motivated to <laughs> learn and like basically monetize your knowledge. Well, when you're a self-taught developer, you have to have that same motivation and learn like your life depended on it, even more so than um, these people who attended um, a college or a coding boot camp for that specialized like computer science, computer engineering type of skill set. An advantage that you have over the people who attended college and these coding boot camps is you're just much more flexible, right? We just talked about that point previously where you can adapt you can let go of things that are not working and you could um iterate and find the things that are working f much faster and ultimately having this ability to move fast um and then be flexible can help you overcome and get a job faster because then you don't you can in college like, you have to wait until like you finish a semester a coding boot camp you have to f wait until you finish the whole course but then when you're a self-taught developer you can create um i guess like endpoints or like little mini goals in your um which your whole plan of like finishing learning a skill set and be like okay when i get after a month i'm going to try to apply to like 50 companies and try to get market feedback. And then if you land a job within that one month, then you completely, you know, I mean, you got to the end goal. I mean, college, coding bootcamp, the end goal is for you to get that job. So for a self-taught developer, you learn like your life depends on it and you have a more flexible way of getting from A to B. And lastly, the benefit of being a self-taught developer from a learning standpoint is you get, you can focus on one craft or one specialization like area like being a front-end developer or a back-end developer and get really good at that typically college and even coding boot camps coding boot camps do a better job but then they try to craft you into this generalist and then that's really hard for you for you to um, pitch yourself when you're trying to apply for like um, focus roles like being a front-end developer or a back-end developer um, 
granted, like the more senior engineer you are, you kind of understand how to tamper with both. But when you're first starting out and trying to get in, break into this industry, it's better to come at it with a really sharp sword uh, and then try to penetrate the market from either like a front end perspective or like a back end perspective or, or even a mobile perspective. And that's all I have for um, this video. We were just talking about um, the advantages of becoming a self-taught developer from a learning perspective. And next up, we'll talk about how to tackle um, or talk about the advantage of being a self-taught developer from a career and financial perspective.